Okay, so alive. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. I'm Matt Bork. You're watching and listening to the Liberty's number one podcast. Yup, the Liberty's yup, the flats. On the show today, I'm joined by my pal Richard Kelly. Richard, what's the crack? Hey, Matt. How are you? I'm good, sir. Back on the show again. What do you think of our new studio? It's very lush, yeah. I'm well impressed. Yeah? It was enough to get me back. <laughs> we lured you into a bit of smoke <laughs> and mirrors, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's convincing enough, so <laughs> I'll take it. It's the best studio I've been in. Deadly. Uh, when did we interview before? Was it episode 53? Good. Uh, you'd know more than me I about think, that. I think it was. We'd done it up in the college. I had, a little, no, had me little table. We, and had a we tried to, and then your man came in with the microwave. Do you remember that? Oh, that's right. And the sound didn't work, and then we ended up actually doing it in the other room. That's, and yeah. I came back. I came here before, yeah. And you, um, you came back here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. The sound was shy. Yeah. Your man came in. He just, like, we literally, we were interviewing. <laughs> Things have got worse <laughs> since then. <laughs> oh, Andy, you think fucking it's a shit show now? You think I'm a shit show? You should see me back then. Smoke and mirrors. Smoke, smoke <laughs> and mirrors, Richard. Smoke mirrors. I used to go around with half a half a chair the back of the chair so sawed off sawed off son son and me dad painted it for me and i used to just clip the the mics to it and uh have the laptop on it oh, oh yeah, it was, yeah. it, it, was a that, yeah. it was a baba job yeah and you had a little uh wasn't even a gopro it was like a tiny little webcam that you're like i hope this captures the footage <laughs> 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 I don't think it did. Ah, oh, <laughs> fucking hell! Yeah, but look, I started the whole podcast with a Zoom H1, and I thought that's what you do when you start a podcast. And someone said to me, "Where's the laptop?" I was like, "What do you mean the <laughs> laptop? Where are you gonna put it on?" I says, "And where?" Are you? <laughs> I says, "What do you mean?" And he goes, "Do you have like an RS feed and all? Do you have show art?" And I was like, "What's all these questions for? I just want to be a podcast and all." Do you know what I mean? Lost me. I wouldn't know where to start. Oh, it was an absolute shit show. So look, I've asked Richard to come back on the show today because Rich is a lecturer on the Sports Science College up in Tala IT, where I studied. But also Rich was my health coach. I asked him to, to do some work with me. Was it back in 2019? 2020, end of 2020, August 2020, I think. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Because it was after the first time I was on the podcast, you hit me up and said I'm actually interested in what we spoke about on the podcast and I'm interested in availing of your services and then you kind of left it sit and then it was the end because I remember I was still in Limerick at the time and it was kind of the end of the first wave of Covid I was back down there and we started working together in August September 2020 I want to say yeah Deadly was yeah. it a pain in the hole was it? <laughs> no it wasn't to be honest with you it was a nice for me it was a challenge because I primarily would mostly work with athletes um, Are you saying I'm not an athlete? I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like... No smoke on me whole, yeah. Richard, will you? It start, well, I was looking back, it started off very much as you had, um, I suppose, body composition goals, more so than anything in terms of wanting to look a certain way and feel better with your performance and fuel your gym sessions. I don't think you were getting... You felt like you weren't getting the most out of your gym sessions, I think, was the original conversations. Um, and then for me, it was kind of like, well, I'm, I'm kind of more used to working in athletes and like, okay, it's kind of a, a step in that direction. And then as I suppose we got into things, there was probably more of a, a health consciousness that came into it that I wouldn't have been overly familiar with at the time, but it was like, okay, well, this is an opportunity for me to work with someone and develop my skills as well as obviously help yourself yeah. and change what it, what it was that you wanted to change. So yeah, we started back then. Yeah, so look, before we dive into that and what I would like to cover is I'm going to kind of talk about a bit of the work that you've done with me so people can pick and pull parts out of that that they can apply it themselves. But just like as a little backdrop, tell tell for anyone that hasn't listened to the last podcast and know the work that you do, what is your background? Like, I know you're lecturing up in IT, uh, sports science, nutrition. Just give us a little s synopsis. <laughs> Uh, do you want to know when I was born and where? Or? <laughs> born and raised in Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, no, my background is in sports science and health. And I studied in what was IT Tala, I think, the year behind you, I think. Um, and then uh, graduated from that and went over to the UK and did a master's in sport nutrition. Always had the goal and desire to work in pro sport. Wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Was it a strength condition or more nutrition? And then as I kind of got towards third year, fourth year degree, Nutrition seemed to jump out at me and I was a bit more interested in it. Um, yeah, I went over to the UK, did my master's and was got really lucky, got on a placement with a rugby team over there and that kind of kick-started this idea of working in rugby and pro sport was kind of in touching distance. So my master's finished up 
and I came back to Dublin and I was working as a researcher in DCU, kind of UL as well. Um, and that project finished up and then an opportunity came up to work for Munster Rugby, um, which was based in Limerick. So I applied and I was lucky enough to get the gig. So I was the performance nutritionist for Munster for their academy for uh, just over three years, I think, 2017 to the kind of end of 2020, um, which was obviously fantastic. It was the first real feet first into pro sport. And then I suppose all alongside that, I was doing kind of private clients, consultancy work with inter-county teams, um, still training myself, still had an interest in strength conditioning, so I was kind of always kept my hand in that. Um, and actually, it was just before the Munster interview came up, I got the opportunity to kind of cover a few classes in what was IT Tala, now TU Dublin, uh, Tala campus. So same building, same people, just new brand. And I um, got an opportunity to kind of cover Initially, it was like physiology and metabolic health, which was kind of interesting because that was one of the modules I really enjoyed in studying the undergrad. Um, and then I kind of saw there was an avenue because the nutrition lecture, well, there wasn't really a, an out and out nutritionist or dietitian that was employed working on the kind of nutrition stream of things. <coughs> and it was kind of pitched to me then, well, is there, if I was able to kind of cover the biochemistry side of things, and metabolism would I be interested in taking it all the way up from second year biochemistry all the way up to final year sport and exercise nutrition and then since then it's kind of developed so I now look after second year biochem semester three and four third year human nutrition fourth year ex sport and exercise nutrition applied nutrition and, and we have a new course called sports studies um, which is more about the coaching side of things and I cover a nutrition module so it's an introduction basic nutrition but it's more about like dealing with people and actually talking to your athletes and getting the information out to your athletes, which is probably a really good skill set to be able to have. Um, and then I supervised a couple of projects as well. Um, and then since kind of leaving Munster, I was doing private work with yourself and another couple of clients um, and started working with a, a GAA team now and a League of Ireland football team just to kind of keep my hand in while I'm still lecturing. So that's that's kind of where we are now <laughs> and here we are <laughs> uh, and there's a couple of things that i wanted to point on that was was the metabolic health was a big piece for me that connecting with you uh also us connecting and just that's where i wanted to, to work with you was that metabolic piece but then also we connected and that's really important to work with anyone you know is that is that connection yeah. like and it's not just about the carbs fats and proteins it's not just about weight loss there's there's more you know and 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 obviously spending some time with you knowing that you've done the the degree in talent and uh we we interviewed on the podcast and i knew your passion for metabolic health and that was really we i linked in with you i just thought it was uh was important to have because i've worked with coaches before lads from gyms predominantly bodybuilding coaches and it was just like, do this, take that, whatever, and off you go. And there's, there's more to it than that, isn't yeah, there? 100%, yeah. It's interesting, like, I started working with this new team, and it's kind of the first time this team has had a nutritionist, and we did kind of some pre-season testing, and some of the lads came up there and were like, oh, so do I come to you to get my diet plan? And I'm a bit like, well, I mean, I'm not going to ride it for you here and now because I've, I've only met you for the first time. I don't know what food you like, don't know what you're allergic to, don't know what your schedule's like. I don't know the flow of the club type of thing so i'm more than happy to sit with you and figure out what it is you're doing now and how can i best influence you to make that kind of take a step or a couple of steps towards what we would deem maybe optimal nutrition for what you're trying to achieve in terms of your personal goals and also in line with your sport performance so i think there is still a bit of a maybe a misconception out there that diet, 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 dietitians and nutritionists kind of just they show up and they write you a plan on a bit of paper and hand it to you and it's kind of like all right thanks i'll see you in a couple of weeks how you're getting on and maybe that still does happen and that could be a time restriction thing in certain environments and settings but it's not how i like to do it and, and from my own experience it, it it hasn't really worked when i tried to do it that way so to me it kind of i was kind of to give an example i'd write lads diet plans and i'd go into the change rooms or whatever and i'd see them like on the floor they hadn't even gone into the gear bag or i found one in the showers once and i was like okay this isn't getting true because they're definitely not going to eat the food because they haven't read the page yet and wh why did i kind of spend so much time if, if if it's not getting through so could i spend my time in a better way and, and actually improve how i'm communicating with people to actually get through 
and then it starts to become a little bit easier in terms of they understand you you understand them and i'm kind of a big fan of the kind of phrase i'm using at the moment is this idea of co-creation not just following so mm. everything i try to do with the likes of yourself or any client or any athlete is we're in this together you know yourself more than better than anyone else can i'm only there as a guide to help you walk that path to get to where you want to go whereas if i come in and say here take this do that eat this i'll see you in four weeks i can understand why someone might not put up a barrier per se but he doesn't know me why, why is he telling me to eat this and i prefer to eat that and there's a lot of unanswered questions whereas when you actually sit down and con converse like we're doing now is kind of opens those avenues to answer questions and problem solve together mm. because it's 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 not all <coughs> my responsibility it's not all your responsibility that, and that's kind of how i view coaching and, and working with people yeah and that and i like what you said there because when i started working with you i felt that that it was and first of all i respected you and two you weren't like any of the coaches or the people i worked with before it was like take this do that that's what do there was no kind of co-creation together it was like they had a like one person in particular they had a proven record in weight loss or conditioning for competition for bodybuilding blah blah and i was just handing over a blueprint and saying do this take that i know this works and there was no kind of me then taking ownership and i didn't i didn't create it. the stuff that was on it i didn't really eat anyway and it was not yeah i think it was that co-creation that's what i liked about working with you and i, I sensed that straight away and I think there's more, there's more chance of adherence to something yeah. if there is co-creation rather than dictation. Hundred percent. It's that ownership piece is the key. Is I like I always say like I can't eat the food for you. I can't cook the food for you. I can give you all the information in the world, but you have to be the one to step up and say, look, I'm I'm serious about this. I have goals. I want to meet those goals. And kind of like we mentioned before, we even started the podcast there. Like, do my behaviors match? or line up with my goals and if they're not well that's where you lean on me a little bit and be like okay i i i think i'm doing everything well is is there someone that's you know able to take a step back and be objective and say well maybe you could improve here or improve here because what i found and what i do find and even yourself is you had a base level of knowledge and almost wanted to kind of inadvertently trip yourself up because you were second guessing yourself the whole time and you it actually became kind of we'd have a conversation and I'd be like, you're doing fine, just keep going. And you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, thanks, thanks. And then you text me the next day and be like, it's gone, it's gone, I, I need to change. <laughs> but it's like, no, you don't, we'll talk next week, keep going. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. just kind of having that little external voice where you can go like, no, it's in, in some, for some people that's really handy is like, it's, it's in someone else's hands or they have that kind of, um, mm, adherence is the wrong word, like uh, almost feel like, I don't know if you felt this, but you might feel guilty if you didn't adhere to what I was kind of asking you to do because it was letting me down. Some people like that, well, not like the feeling, but it's kind of like, oh, I better not do this. Accountability. This yeah, sorry. That's the A word I couldn't think of, adherence. <laughs> Accountability, that's the one, yeah. Oh, 100%. I, like, if I sign up to do something, uh, I'm going to do it. And if I like, say to you and we're working together, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. And I, I was I was regimented as fuck when we yeah. worked together. Yeah. I was, like, <laughs> yeah, anal yeah, as no. fuck. <laughs> But let's it's amazing I came back. What? <laughs> it's amazing I came back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I found really difficult, though, was asking you in the first place. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, 100%. Because you, you were on a course that I was on. Like, no disrespect. You've done the training. You read the books. And I was like, I sh I sh nothing about this is nothing about you. Yeah, yeah. This is about me. I was like, I should know this. I should be able to do this myself. I'm asking, like, somebody that was in a year below me to help me. Like, my ego was screaming at me. <laughs> like, so then it became about, I wanted to change my health markers. But then I also wanted to be able to to let go of my ego let go of one thing or needing help and saying yeah I, I do need it and the other one was to get out of my own way like and you know how often i was in my own way yeah. like and I'll, I'll touch on another thing that i did and you, you pulled me on it but that was a big piece on me was actually going yeah i need help yeah yeah 
yeah, I could I can kind of relate to that myself as well in terms of other things I've tried to pursue and you kind of as we were talking about on the, our thing was like do we have to white knuckle this or can we actually relax on it a little bit and I was always reluctant to kind of outsource and like we both know the value of learning from other people so I, we all have that kind of inner voice where maybe it's like I should know this I should be able to do this or whatever kind of the um whatever the, the goal or the behavior whatever it is you're trying to do like when you might slag me I'm the guy that goes on courses I love learning I love doing courses and going to classes is what I get slagged about but the way I think about it is there's someone else out there that's better at whatever it is I'm trying to do than I am and there's a reason why they're in the position they're in so tr go and get help off them because okay it's, it's a definitely a financial investment you're going to invest time but is your time investment going to be maximised or are you going to be spinning your wheels kind of week on week being like I'm not really sure where to go next Whereas if you have someone that's kind of in front of you and you're like, this looks good, this looks good, this is where I think you should work on or this is where we should go next. That's kind of what you're investing in and that's what you're kind of, if you are paying for, that's what you're paying for. Mm. Whereas, yeah, you can, you can white knuckle it and you can spend hours at whatever it is you're trying to do, kind of going in circles and chasing your tail and be like, how do you know you're going in the right direction? Are you on the right path? And then you've got someone to go, well, actually, if you tweaked it like this, you'd actually see things kick on and get better and improve so and then that's the kind of type of sorry thinking i try to apply um towards everything these days is like i don't know everything about everything i wish i did <laughs> 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 but there's people out there that do know a lot more about certain areas so reach out to them and see can they help and it, it's no kind of ill reflection on your own self as much as your ego is kicking and screaming you're like no you can do this you can do this i can do it but it I'd actually just make it easier on the both of us if I got help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I sat with I sat with you know asking you, and then I sat with like I I sat and I thought, what will he do? What 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 could I do that he couldn't? Do? What could he do that I couldn't do? And I wrote down, I could do all this. I could white knuckle it, as you say. <laughs> I could do it. And then I said to myself, what would you be compromising? Okay, what would I be giving up? Okay, you'd have to give up the magic mind stuff, the the creation, the the because you once I go in on something, I'll go all in on that, and I'll spend all my time making me plans, sticking to it. You, I'll become so fixated on it, yeah. and I says, so where's the benefit from that? I says, I oh, know, just look, I, I'm gonna trust the process, and hand it over and go right, and and I have to say, Rich, is like, I've a, I've a mental health coach, I a counselling. Then I, I, I regarded you then as my hell coach. And then I had Jeff Thompson as my spiritual mentor. And I said to myself, this is the smartest move ever. It freed me up. Yeah. Like I had so much time then for my own creativity. I, was, I didn't have to worry about it. I just had to follow a plan. But it wasn't just following it. I was co-creating. It wasn't just being told what to do. Because you didn't tell me what to do. <laughs> we worked together and there was there was times and we'll get to that piece but that was that was a was the game changer realizing how beneficial just as you said there rich that it's a smart move to invest in yourself health physical health mental health spiritual health yeah isn't it it's it's just 100%, yeah, yeah and you know the, the amount of time and um, effort and frustration you probably expose yourself to by trying to white knuckle things when you could just out, like reach out to somebody else who has a bit more experience or kind of does things a slightly different way and they'd be like oh well you're looking at it from this way whereas i see it like this and like that could save you so much time and stress and frustration and keep you on the path keep you progressing yeah that's yeah that's how i look at it. i still get that like i'd be like oh no i shouldn't really be getting help off this fella but like why not who cares <laughs> yeah it's yeah. it's brilliant and i don't know how long we were into the into the program I was 90 something kilos, 91 and a half kilo or something. And we had a goal or everything like that. And I remember saying, <laughs> I remember texting you going, yeah, yeah, I know we said we do this, but I was thinking of doing this, this and this and that. And you were like, that's not the plan. Mm. That's not the plan. We didn't decide that. No. And I was like, oh, bollocks. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Again, I was taking over. I know a bit about this and I know a bit about that. And again, I was just was trying to fucking make me own plan and you were like this is not happening that's not what you agreed <laughs> and i was like fucking brilliant that's exactly what i need yeah. not someone to plamaze me and, and kind of like oh yeah 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 i was like no that's not the plan yeah and that's what coaching 
does with people. It just calls you out and you're bullshit. Kind of, yeah. And I would have been happy. Like, yeah, go off and do that if you want, but you're not going to get where you want to go because yeah. it, you'll end up cycling back to where you were and the whole reason why we started working together was for this purpose. And if if you're... Not not that I didn't... No, I don't ever think you were thrown in the towel or anything, but if like if you're to decide, actually, that's not what I wanted. Like, like you said, that wasn't the plan. That's, you know... Yeah. Even uh, repeating the same stuff and expecting different results. It's the, it's the sign of madness. I remember you did send me a post, I think, before we started working. It was about uh, about giving up. There was something about giving up, a percentage of giving up. This, oh, I can't remember. When it gets tough, this amount of people give up. And oh, okay. I can't remember. It was a bar chart. I know he sent you back two pictures of donkeys on Blackpool Beach. <laughs> and I <they> said... <laughs> And I says, this is me. I don't fucking give up. I'm like a donkey on Blackpool Beach. I go all day long. <laughs> and when it gets hard, I'll just keep on going. Yeah. And it was hard. Like, it was hard. But you know what I did enjoy about it? And I've said this, and I say this to, to people that I coach. There's great comfort in order. Because without order, there's disorder. Mm. There's chaos. And like, I was talking to someone on coach as well. And I was saying control. And they were like, oh, I don't want to say I'm in control. I says, let's not get lost in language. There's a sense of order. When we follow a plan, we're, we're part of a routine and a structure. Like mm. with the, the stuff that we do. And I still do it to this day. I still eat me seven slices of McCambridge breads and 30 <laughs> grams of water. I'll uh, get that sponsorship. Yeah, I fucking here. If there's anyone out there that works on McCambridge, tell them that I eat seven slices of uh, brown bread each day with 30 grams of uh, light butter. Oh, God. Um, yeah. And, uh, this uh, may or may not be endorsed by health professionals, folks. <laughs> I'm on me five a day. <laughs> uh, five by five, is it? <laughs> yeah, so it was like, I oh, forget me trying to turn it. Yeah, no, just the, the order was and structure was so beneficial and I enjoy it and I still enjoy it. Good. Well, that's the thing. Like, if I came in and landed in and was like, you're doing things not according to if I have a blueprint or whatever I deem to be the best, like, that doesn't match up. There's a misalignment there and that. To me straight away creates a barrier between you and i working together and you achieving your goals and the thing i'm trying to do is identify as many potential barriers that are between you and your goals and actually work with you to see well why is that a barrier and what are the things we can do to you know get around those barriers or, or you know if we need to white knuckle it go straight through the barrier so that's what i'm trying to do and like if i if i landed in and you're like okay i want you to come on board and help me out with my nutrition i was like, grand i have just a thing and i did all your calories carbs fats and macros and slapped it on in front of him I was like there you go I'll see you in a week you'd be like well i don't eat this and i don't eat that and i get up in my morning routine your, i remember your morning routine was pretty particular because you were trying to get some training in before you were going to your old job and stuff like that as so i just landed in i was like yeah eat this at that time you'd be like i can't fit that in and to me that's n me not really understanding you as the individual so to me i always come back to this idea of, of the client is i know it sounds kind of counterintuitive but the client is the expert a million percent because they know themselves and they know their routine and they know their situation and everyone has unique circumstances and scenarios i might know more about you know calories macronutrients me metabolic health whatever but that's useless if we can't actually col collaborate and sit down together and apply it in a way that works with that individual so I always put the kind of client or athlete in the center as the expert and like they can tell me what they can and can't do with respect to times and days and foods and things like that. And then it's kind of up to me to kind of work with them and be like, okay, well, what would be optimal is this, less optimal is this, and worst case scenario is this. So we kind of have a, you know, it's never black and white. There's a spectrum of things that we can do. And there's choice. And there's choice. And then... Yeah, like there is choice. You could have easily turned around and be like, yeah, no, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay, off you go. That's, that's your choice. I'm I'm not here to kind of uh, dictate or like, that's your choice. That's fine. But you'll be back to me in two weeks being like, it didn't work. And I'm back where I started. And I'm like, yeah, I knew you would be. <laughs> <laughs> I told you so. Uh, yeah. But without being dismissive and without like that, I don't really see a benefit in being like that. But it kind of would be a bit. Which you would probably, yeah, because I know you that way, like, get away with it. Yeah. But other people, it wouldn't be. It'd be like, okay, so how did that work for you? I tried it this way. I tried it your way. I went back to my old way. I'm kind of just spinning my wheels again. Okay, we try a different way now. Mm. I think that's a great point, isn't it, for, for anyone out there 
<clears throat> and it's like what we were just talking before the interview. I'm doing that uh, talk with somebody. Nobody's coming to fucking save you. Uh, and it's and just, I'm going to echo what you just said there. You are the, the master of yourself. You know yourself. You are the expert. Like, we really need to remind people that they know themselves. Like when they go to the to a doctor's, and I, I say this saying all the time, a good consultant will borrow your watch to tell you the time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, the doctor, you go into the doctor, and like, how are you? I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. And they ask loads of questions, then they tell you something. But you basically told them. Mm. And, you know, people, we hand over our power. But it's lovely to hear you say that and uh, as a coach, to say to people, no, you know best. I'm just going to help you see this barrier that you've put in front of yourself that keeps tripping you up mm. and when we gently move that out of the way or we shine a light of awareness on it to say this may be contributing to you not getting to where you need to go we may have success yeah. it's 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 simple in theory but not in practice yeah i think a, like when you hear kind of nutrition or dietitian i think the the feeling or the, the want is to get stuck straight into all about the food and then kind of as i learned through experiences like food is kind of half the half the piece of the puzzle because there's a reason why people eat the way they do there's a reason why people don't eat certain things there's a reason why people might skip meals there's a reason why people might overeat at certain times there's all these kind of questions that you need to ask and kind of behind it um it's actually interesting we do practical skills in one of the university uh, modules uh, in nutrition and i kind of gave a scenario where one student was the client, one student was, like tr the, p the students are training to be nutritionists essentially, one student is acting as a nutritionist. And I just said, I want all the client, the clients and I said, look, I want you to talk to your nutritionist where you have an issue with like overeating or you're gaining weight and you don't want to be any weight or you're, you're not losing weight and you want to lose weight. So kind of make up these, uh, this scenario and have a chat with them. So the first example came back was, um, he eats crisps every night was the example he said and i was like okay and what was your response i told them to stop eating crisps and they could substitute that for something with less calories or something like that and i was like okay um did anyone think of asking why they were eating crisps and they were like no i was like why did you think it was valuable to find out why they're doing it is it like boredom is it because they skip breakfast and they're actually hungry and they just like eating crisps or is it they sit down to watch the tv and they they just happen to have a back like what are like there's all these different factors that you need to be aware of that it, it's not just about swapping the, the food out it's understanding what goes into the decision behind having that food whatever the food is whether it is crisps or whether it's you know you like eating McCambridge bread like there's decisions and behaviors and beliefs and things behind those decisions and we need to be able to kind of identify those and see well how many of those decisions line up with your goals or how many of those decisions kind of track to behaviors that line up with your goals and how many of them are taking you away from your goals and then it's about reinforcing the ones that are pushing you towards your goals and working on okay can we modify the ones that are taking you away from your goals and i'm, I'm using the term goals because it's probably something we would have done is set targets mm. and goals whereas <coughs> you know a goal could be something like if someone wants to improve cardio metabolic markers or someone wants to lose a bit of weight someone wants to know get a couple more steps in a day because they want to be more physically active or you know improve their health to improve their appearance like this goals can be whatever you want them to be like mm. do you know really love what you just done there rich is that you it, it, is my is my language right when i say this you made you took it away from being mechanical to more psychological you know because behavior is an attitude and paradigms is a huge contributor rather than the mechanical carbs, fats and proteins, bag of crisps, protein bars, chicken fillets. It's it's more than that. Yeah. It's more complex than that. Like it's like when people say it's just carbs or uh, calories in versus calories out. It's that simple. Just eat more and move less. Or do you know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah, eat less, move more. <laughs> it's, it's just so much more, yeah. isn't it? It's not yeah. as... Oh, yeah, and if you, like you've got someone that, that doesn't move at all, like, and then the messages move more, like, how much, how often, when, what, what do I do? Or you hear the kind of ten thousand steps a day, and you've got someone that's hitting a thousand steps a day. Like, <coughs> well, what about if you even got to two thousand, three thousand, or four thousand? That's an improvement. And then if you're happy enough to get four thousand, could you push that to six thousand? That's still an improvement, and you're still 
five thousand steps better off than where you started and if you look how far you've come use that as motivation to keep going if you want to keep going and you can kind of use these i think of it as like steps on a ladder and the closer the steps are together the easier it is to get up the ladder whereas if you have a ladder with wider steps it's harder to climb the ladder so if you break your goals down into smaller steps and you'll just like start you'll get the first one and that kind of okay it's okay i can do this and there's a bit of confidence and then motivation and then you hit the next one i can do this you hit the next one and it starts to kind of hopefully take off from there and in an ideal world it would take off and stay going and and a lot of people kind of find they get to a point and you know the the, the kind of thing is oh i fell off the wagon or i need to get back on track and you're like well okay well what do you think contributed to you not adhering to the behaviors you you tried to adhere to and then there's the there's the barrier again that's come up in conversation what do we work on what do we do things like that so brilliant and it's um great we kind of segued into this piece lovely the way you said there um falling off the wagon and I, I and i used this saying that you said to me and i use it many many different places was the one about falling off the wagon where i'd say to you you know in the, in the past if i did fall off the wag wagon per se that i'd go and i'd mill a curry or I'd have a lot of points and i'd fucking born the born the brit born the ship and you get a great analogy that you gave me was if you dropped your phone and you cracked it mm. would you bounce it off the wall yeah. You know, you wouldn't smash the rest of the phone. You go, ah, it's just cracked. Yeah. And I thought that was a fucking game changer for me. I bring that with me all the time now. And it's just, it's 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 moved me away from that catastrophic behaviours. I sure might as well be hung for a sheep or as a lamb. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's such a small little thing. It's something that resonates with me as well. And it kind of, it changed my outlook on things when I first heard it. So it's something I do kind of talk about and use. Um, so I'm glad it kind of stuck with you. Because it's not a catastrophe, it's like I think there's a kind of a want for everything to be extreme and maybe black and white, and it's kind of we're mostly in the grey area and we're living within, you know, there's no on or off or yes or no. It's kind of in this kind of sliding scale or a kind of a spectrum of towards your goals, away from your goals, optimal, less optimal. That's how I start to think of things. Right, brilliant. How can we? Do you know what I get asked all the time by people? Why are you so good looking? <laughs> well, this, this. <laughs> I got why, him. <laughs> why, why am I such a ginger super hunk? Uh, no, morality, morality and food, good and bad. All oh, right, yeah. Okay. You know, this is good, that's bad. Best exercise, best food. Is this good? Is this bad? Like, and my answer to, to to that is nothing's good or bad. It just is. Mm. How do you coach people around that? Uh, to, 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 to try change that mindset from them yeah i i'm a, not a big advocate of assigning morality to your foods like I, I'm, I maybe i'm in a fortunate position where i can understand that all any food no matter what you put in front of me is a combination of different macronutrients that has a overall caloric value and that's one way i can think about things but i'm i'm well aware not everyone thinks about that so um just it, it like you said it just is it is a food and uh, for example this food may contain more calories because it's higher in fat than this food it's not necessarily a bad food and this it doesn't make the other food a good food or i i'm a big fan of kind of looking at nutrition within a certain context and i always kind of go back and forth with students on this is like you'd probably say that you know the types of foods you'd probably see in a dressing room before a match or in the lead up to an event probably wouldn't be classified as as health foods or healthy foods you're talking about like confectionery like jelly babies and jaffa cakes and um gummy bears and there's probably like just bits of fruit floating around there's uh, carb drinks and gels and things like that high in the glycemic index yeah because you're trying to achieve a goal with, with athletes is like making sure they've got most amount of fuel available for their event so they can perform at their highest intensity and for as long as possible but that's within the context now if you remove those foods and place them into an individual who's not exercising not competing and not training well you're providing a lot of say carbohydrates and potentially a lot of calories that aren't going to necessarily get used so that makes them suboptimal for that context but again the food hasn't changed it's the context and the environment in which you're presenting the food has changed and i'm a big believer in trying to figure out like what's the context behind the foods and how do you how can you fit our food into a context 
um, and kind of seeing, well, what is your current, maybe for an example, an athlete, what's your current training status? Have you trained? Have you not trained? What's your current environment? Is it the, is it the case where you have the option to not eat anything or eat, you know, this less than optimal food choice? And I'll be like, okay, always eat something because you're an athlete with high energy demands. You need to refuel, you need to replenish. Okay, it's not the lean chicken breast and rice that might be associated with health and optimal performance, but it's better than not eating and, and kind of underfueling and risking under recovering and not being able to perform. Um, uh, yeah, did that kind of touch, or hopefully kind of. And then the other way to kind of maybe think about foods, I look at things like... Um, what you could suppose I look at kind of food volume and and the really simplest way of looking at this is how actually big a portion of food is per caloric value so like 100 grams of uh, or 100 calories say of broccoli is a couple of 100 grams of broccoli whereas 100 calories of you know oil or butter isn't or isn't that many won't fill you up basically mm. so how do the foods kind of actually sit in your stomach and fill you up in terms of literal kind of size they take up and it kind of plays into this idea of energy or, or calorie density in terms of, you know, your higher fat foods have more calories per 100 grams compared to your lower fat foods. Mm. And there can be a time where an athlete has really high energy demands and you need to use those higher fat foods because they have more calories to meet those energy demands. And then you've got scenarios where they're not training or they're not as active, so you don't need to worry about that. And you look for less calorically dense foods, higher volume foods that might give them fuller for longer, things like that. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get it. And another question was was around athletes and eating and your normal Joe soap. You know, people tend to see athletes and the food that they consume. Yeah, and I, yeah. I was gonna make that point as well. Is like athletes that are performing at the highest level, like elite athletic performance, isn't elite health. And a lot of great the time, point. A lot of the time is. No, don't get me wrong, <coughs> the baseline level of any kind of practicing dietitian or nutritionist is health first. So health is your kind of baseline priority, keep your athletes fit, keep them healthy. But then there are certain scenarios where you're really trying to push boundaries and push limits to meet certain intensities and, and push for records and things like that, that, you know, performance becomes the priority. Um, you've probably, I don't know if you've seen, there's probably like those certain athletes in certain sports get down to really ridiculously low levels of body fat. And you would say, okay, well, that's not healthy. Like, I know it's not healthy, but for them to win their sport, which is what they're paid to do or what they they really want to do, that's what they need to subject themselves to for a short period of time. It's not like they're like that, three six five, you know, twenty four seven type of thing. So, um, and there's a misnomer in terms of, I think it goes both ways. Whereas some people might see, well, uh, like take for example, Lucas had a really basic example, not sponsored, um. <laughs> They, and I don't want to throw any shade, but you'd see like athletes maybe drinking some of those on the side of the pitch or um, at an event, and people kind of associate that, well, he's an athlete, he's got good nutrition habits, so we think he's healthy, I should drink that. And you're like, well, you're not doing as much training as him to the highest intensity or high level as him or her. Um, so it doesn't make sense within the context of what you're doing. But then you have the other people that say, well, like, oh, Lucozade is an unhealthy food. It's full of sugar. Why is an athlete drinking it if he's meant to be, you know, the pinnacle of health? And you're like, well, the context is it's a, a fluid that provides lots of carbohydrates. So you're looking at fast fueling. Acting. Uh, yeah, fast, fast acting. acting. You're looking at fueling and hydration, which are two key priorities for an athlete. And again, the food hasn't changed. Lucozade is Lucozade, but the context of who's taking it and when they're taking it is different and that puts a different spin on things mm. so it just is as you said yeah and, and, and that's and it's that quick i get asked this all the time is this good food is this bad food is this this um without getting into the whole fucking malarkey that you just explained very elegantly and brilliant i just <laughs> I wouldn't I, agree <laughs> i went on a bit <laughs> I, it's not like it is it well, yeah, <laughs> Trying to keep up with you. Yeah, geez, you hear it all day. <laughs> I just throw my eyes to heaven now. People say that. It's like, oh, just eat the fucking food. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Like, yeah. just whatever. Knock yourself out. Good for because what? bad for what? Like, the minute that we're spending together and you're eating that plate, I don't know what you're going to do for the other 23 hours of the day. Bingo, yeah. You know, it's just so I can't really make a comment on it. And that's yeah. the thing. But here, let's, let's help people with that. Okay. You're, uh, 
passion is, metabolic health. How do we help people? And we'll say we'll just target people, men, men of our age. How, where do people start? If they want to make improvements around the metabolic health, uh, that's where I work with you, or my, 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 my uh, insulin, uh, waist circumference, body mass index, well, not body mass index, but my, my overall uh, fat we, competition. We, yeah, did we do BMI? E we did wait. We did we did circumferences and girts, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah. done circumference yeah. girts, done weight, uh, dropped ten kilo. I'm actually still rocking around eighty one kilo. Fair yep, play, better. Yeah. Fair play, yeah. Ripped. <laughs> uh, so where do people start? Real? What? What? What's the? What can we? How can we help them? Uh, it's a good point. I'd if they're not already aware, or maybe like the, I think what prompted the conversation or really accelerated the conversation was you had blood work done and you got a profile done and you got. Um, results back that you weren't happy with and you said right okay here's the scenario i've got results i need to change something i can white knuckle it or i can reach out to someone and that's how you reach out to me so i mean if it's someone that has a slight concern over maybe a metabolic health issue if, so for example we're talking about things probably like insulin sensitivity uh total cholesterol triglycerides things like that uh maybe you could look at like resting heart rate but maybe a, a blood test would might be a good place to start just for mm. kind of you know like a car goes for a service is everything working the way it should be um and i suppose if you're looking at it if you get in early and you're trying to identify things before they happen or get to a point where they're maybe past the post or, or maybe hopefully not irreversible but um that'd be a good start but then if it's just someone who's like maybe less you know metabolic health and it's more like weight loss or muscle gain for lads that want to get into the gym Figure out where you are, where you're starting, and figure out where you want to go. So you know, is it a, is it a weight goal you have? Is it a like a, an aesthetic appearance goal you have? Is it a, a number of kind of steps you have? And then see where you are, see where you want to get to, and then start to think well, like, well, what are the behaviours I currently have, and maybe what are the behaviours that I would probably need to have to get me to that point? What are the things that are standing in between me and getting to that point what are the things that are actually pushing me towards that point lean more towards the things that are actually pushing you towards that progress towards your goal and then start to slowly work on the things that are taking you away from your goal and it doesn't have to be an overnight overhaul at all i think when you when people try to you know i'm going to throw the kitchen sink at this great i love your enthusiasm i love your energy but that will burn out you can't rely on motivation that's where you fall back on your behaviors so you need to actually work on those and then get them embed them and to a, a point there is a bit of lifestyle change you know you're not just going to continue the way you were and expect different results like we said you have to kind of buy in and change aspects of your lifestyle and almost you know oh i'm a new me without kind of sounding like that <laughs> so yeah it, it, it kind of it's it's it, it depends on their goals as well i suppose yeah i think that was brilliant uh well, excellent you you covered it from from the medical model getting blood tests right up to just people want to improve their performance or train that weight loss and absolutely fantastic you made a great point you did i thought you might have said it in in that piece that you said there when we work together i think it's great and another quote that i i robbed from you is that consistency trumps intensity all oh, day long yeah. I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> that one. I'm robbing them all. <laughs> They're going to my next book. Oh, I need to go back to my notes. I forgot that one. Yeah. That's a brilliant one, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's incredible. And I say it all the time. I say it. It's, it's, it's in all my talks when I'm doing stuff is consistency trumps intensity because we start off like a rocket like you said i'll buy the runners i'll buy the watch i'll get an app on my phone i'll clear out my kitchen i'll get new spandex just for running around the gap. <laughs> uh, that all lasts a week we'll get a new membership in the gym and then bang mm. there's too many things there's too many things to keep up mm. the guys say what you say start really slow start small just go for the walk spend two weeks doing that mm. then add something small in instead of going balls to the wall on the first week joining yeah. the gym and all the other malarkey what yeah. you think yeah like there can there, there are certain people that are grand they're like they'll start it and they'll get after it and they'll go for it and they won't change and that'll last them and get them to where they want to go. And then there's other people that... There's a small percentage, though. Very small percentage. But they are out there and fair play to you. I wish I was one of you. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have this perspective. Um, yeah. But yeah, for a majority of people, I would say, is like, 
trying to do too much too soon and you kind of trip yourself up and you kind of get lost and you don't know where to focus so my biggest thing is let's pick one thing that you want to improve on and let's nail that and you'll start to find that as you start to go through you're like well I was thinking about doing this and I started to do it this way and I found it didn't work so I changed what I was doing and I started to do it this way and you're like okay does it work for you cool can you stick to it for two three weeks cool is it is it now part of your everyday routine where you don't think about it no okay so let's move on to the next thing who cares if you haven't done it in four weeks what are you trying to do here you're trying to change your life for a lot of people now I'll take that for granted like, pinch of salt if you're working with an athlete they probably do have time restrictions they need to be on point by a certain mm. date or a certain performance and that's fine and that's kind of where the health piece and the performance piece kind of overlap and you prioritise one or the other but for general populations and just in general you're like what's the rush you know Mm, I think you made a great point there, be specific, because when you go to the doctor or to a healthcare professional and they tell you to, imp- you know, you got to start improving your health or you got to start getting healthy and it can become very vague for people. Where do they start? It's it's yeah. it's a minefield. It's like looking into a field sometimes. But as you rightly said, pick pick one that you'd like to improve, like physically movement. Mm. Okay, maybe I'll do that. Then I'll be looking at my nutrition. Then I'll be looking at my my mental health or my my environment or my sleep pattern or yeah. blah blah blah. I I kind of but I think back to how I used to deal with people and I kind of cringe because of. Oh, that. lovely! Yeah, tell us about that. I uh, I would very much the type where if someone, and this is me when I was a an overconfident undergrad that didn't know as much as he thought he knew. I'm very surprised at that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But like I was the kind of, in my family anyway, and my mates was kind of like known as the guy to go to and talk to about going to the gym and training and stuff like that. And I was very happy to tell people what they were doing wrong. Oh, you shouldn't be training that way. Oh, you're you're going for a run, but we should be running this way. And <laughs> Sounds I'm, exactly I'm, like me. I was a fucking know-all. And what am I doing by saying that? I'm creating a barrier. I've created confusion and this idea of ambivalence. I should probably talk about that more. Um, I've created a barrier because now all of a sudden they were happy in running their 5k a couple of times a week and I've been like well you actually should do it this way and they've kind of got overwhelmed and go like, well maybe I shouldn't run at all <laughs> you're like oh no I've done the opposite of what they came to me for so I learned a lot of lessons in terms of how to deal with people and anyone that comes to me and they're like I'm trying this diet I'm like great how are you getting on do you like it is it working for you keep keep at it mm. I mean I, I'm not I don't want to be the reason why someone stops pursuing healthy behaviours mm. because I think there's a better way to do it there may well be but maybe they're not ready to hear that message yet and if I'm not understanding of where they are and their circumstances and Jeez, their environment man you're going deep Richard <laughs> you're going deep these days yeah. it's better when you're calling people out on the internet and I'm saying you fucking not saying you did I used to do it <laughs> I'd be calling people out and I'd be ridiculed and pe- I'd go through a meticulously if people wrote a post and specifically around health I know he was quite knowledgeable back then because I was well read. Now I haven't a fucking clue. And I'd riddle, ridicule him. Only recently somebody put up a post. Um, they were advertising their services. And it was lose weight, get toned. Yeah, and I looked at it, get toned. And I, I said, I, I, I sent a message to somebody and said, when you get your gun and badge to be a personal trainer, please don't say the word toned, blah, 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 right? <laughs> And then two minutes later, I went back to him and said, please, can you erase from your mind what I just said there? That's absolutely terrible what I just done there. I just knocked somebody down trying to fucking do their best. I says, I don't know if that term is right or wrong. I says, but I know one thing for sure is he's trying to promote strength conditioning women. There's more benefits to him saying that than there is negatives. And I said, I'm an asshole. Yeah. I says, forget about what I just said there, you know, and I caught myself. Mm. You know, thinking I was a fucking know-all, but yeah. really he was trying to help people and he's trying to create business for himself. You know. Yeah. But years ago, I never even I never thought yeah. to, twice to that. The exact same. It's like there's a like kind of that linear or um, black and white thinking, isn't it? It's like there's a way, to, a right way to do think things, and there's a wrong way to do things. And you're like, well, if people are just doing things. Okay, you might understand things a little better and deeper, but if that if if you approaching them or saying something to them takes them away from their healthy behavior or their behavior towards their goals then i mean you've done more damage than than anything and was it really worth it so yeah i uh 
it's funny you bring up comments on the internet and stuff. I, I, have a, I always have an internal dilemma. It's like, will I post, won't I post, will I comment? And uh, I have a lot of people actually kind of on to me being like, I don't really have a lot of tolerance for bullshit, as you probably know. <laughs> and they're like, why don't you market that? Like, why don't you get on social media? And I was like, Cause who am I? I'm just a lad that wants to help people. And I don't really have much interest in just calling people out. Like, I understand there's kind of quacks out there. But again, there's people out there that are far more educated than me that do a far better job with kind of breaking apart their arguments than I could. I, I'm probably better spending my time actually working with people and helping people and trying to put good messages out there and even at that I don't really spend the whole pile of time on social media pumping out good messages it's probably just me cooking <laughs> yeah no in fairness you do some good stuff you do some good cooking I've actually uh, did you ever cook beef heart uh, I haven't personally cooked it no I've eaten it though it's lovely Yeah, uh, I get it from my dog for, for Bruce Sir Bruce and the butcher down says have you ever cut cu- it and cook it it's like fillet steak mm. And just for, for, for the crack one day last week, I just took, took a few slices off. And it's incredible. Very lean. Which? Very lean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. But <clears throat> back to our point about going on the internet. Like, yeah, we can get dragged into the negative side of things. And, and you know, uh, bad news or negativity can get around the world before good news can put yeah. its shoes on. Yeah. It's funny, I have a mate, a good friend who's like, um, he's a strength masters in training condition so he's doing personal training at the moment and he was doing everything the right way like yourself he was doing informative posts he had a website he'd send out a weekly newsletter a monthly newsletter about his services and his thoughts on strength conditioning and he has a podcast and um he's promoting all the right messages and i just noticed recently a couple of weeks ago he switched over to putting up kind of memes and fitness memes and, and kind of slagging other people and he's kind of been on to me saying like his number of followers has jumped up, his engagement has jumped up. And he's like, I feel really bad because I'm trying to promote good messages around strength conditioning and training. And what seems to be attractive to people is jokes and kind of slighting other people. And it, it's kind of a weird, just a really weird environment. So um, I was kind of like, yeah, no, I'm not really into that. So. That, that's a that's that's why that's why newspapers sell. That's why drama sells. That's why, you know, like you saying, you can you can uh, could go in and call people out, like the Joe Rogan stuff, and <laughs> that sells. It really does. Love and kindness doesn't sell. Being a nice guy doesn't sell, mm. you know. But uh, for me, it just it just feels like the right thing to do and calling people out because I can see beyond. The, 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 like when people say like fat born and you know like that that gets yeah. the hairs in the back of my neck up when people say fat born and but yeah. I get it I get I get what's behind it and what they're trying to do yeah I have um yeah it's kind of a dilemma of like you know it's misinformation uh, kind of on a scale of how harmful is the misinformation and then I kind of I think I I don't know if I ever vocalised it but I probably just thought to myself like I actually do have a platform and it's I, I'm an educator in university and I have a crop of students coming through that want you know believe in their lecture is up to date with the research and understands what he's doing and has experience in the field so my way of getting out there is by empowering students to you know equip them with the knowledge and the information that as far as I know is up to speed with the research and based on my experiences I can educate them but I mean I'm not really one for kind of shouting from the rooftops and social media and it's so I've kind of I developed maybe an army of, of undergrads that go out and do it for me <laughs> <laughs> you just load their guns for them yeah. Uh, yeah what what kind of like without calling any out but calling anyone out <clears throat> what kind of information is out there that you think at the moment is not really helpful uh, I know for a long time we had the no carbs before marbs oh yeah um, that's still out there like the keto diet always comes up and resurfaces um got very from my understanding it's got very few applications where it can be beneficial uh, and I've also seen now that the intermittent fasting brigade have also jumped on the keto craze so now you've got the intermittent fasting keto diet apparently oh wow yeah and there's a there's a fasting bar did you see the fasting bar yeah unfortunately yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you can have this bar while you're fasting like no, you I, it's no, you it's what? No, you can't. <laughs> it's like telling somebody like they can get in a pool and they won't get wet. It's just like yeah, yeah, oh, it defies logic. That's why I'm kind of like, where do you? Start you can swim that? in this pool, but you won't get wet. <laughs> I was like, what? I think the level of kind of 
again the barrier to getting getting a handle on nutrition is the amount of conflicting information and misinformation out there and um it kind of it does take a bit of skill to be able to kind of sit down and and actually a bit of tolerance to be able to read through research papers and take away key findings and kind of collate all the research into kind of key findings um and it's been able to kind of rely then on what we call the strength of the evidence so you know an example a bad example would be like a, a new study has come out and said for example no carbs is the best way to go blah blah blah. whereas you have like 10 or 11 other studies that suggest otherwise well where it does the weight of the evidence lie but it lies closer to the majority of studies showing this effect so that's where i'm gonna kind of base my information on for the moment and then being able to understand the context of how the study was done who it was done in what the kind of inclusion exclusion criteria were things like that They're like that that's that's a skill set you have to develop by kind of doing it and learn how to do it and going to college to do it like i'm well aware not everyone has the skills and and not everyone's interested or cares to want to go down that route of that level of detail they want to go okay like it gets boiled down as to what do i do so what's good and what's bad (laughs) and you're trying like oh that's not how it works (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's gonna it's 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 just easier for people if you just give them two choices good or bad yeah yeah you know this this the 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 stepper or the rower or a fulfill bar or <laughs> a yorkie and it's either good bad yeah. and it helps because but it is quite it's very simplistic but then it, it can be i can see how it can be very complex for people yeah. but and when you tell them it's more than the protein bar and the 200 calories it's more to do with behaviors and lifestyle and genetics and da, 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 just like oh fuck that yeah. That 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 then becomes complicated for people. Yeah, I think like, I think I don't know. Like I was just from example from recently, I was chatting with a, a new lad athlete I'm starting work with, and he kind of expressed to me that he had he had training on a Monday night and he hadn't eaten since his breakfast. All he'd had was his breakfast, which was actually a pretty decent breakfast by all accounts, context matters, I suppose. Um, and he hadn't eaten since, and I was kind of like, right, okay. So he's like, I was just one of those days where I didn't eat. So uh, the first thing I could have done was give out to him, like, what are you doing showing up to train and not eating? You're an idiot, like, do you want you know, blah, blah. And he's like, well, he probably didn't think about it. So the first thing I should do is probably get him to think about it. Like, what was the decision behind not eating? And then, lo and behold, I didn't really think about it. I just didn't eat today. I kind of, I had nothing there. I had nothing prepared. So now all of a sudden you realize he doesn't have stuff in the house. He doesn't have stuff in the fridge. He kind of kind of doesn't really think ahead about his meals so that's where you're looking to go with your coaching strategy so all i said to him was like the next time we chat i want to make sure you've had three meals a day for the next seven days and then i could see his face being like oh what am i doing what am i doing what am i doing i, was like, I don't care what you eat i just want you to get into the habit of eating regular meals because then the next time you show up to training it won't be 12 hours since you've last eaten and i and then we can work out what's in those meals brilliant and then we can work about are they too close to training are they too far from training do you need extras type of thing so whereas if i came in i was like what are you doing not eating you're an idiot here's your plan you have to eat four times every day and he'd be like well i'm in work tomorrow and i've nothing bought in and all of a sudden he starts on the back foot because he thinks like well he's asked me to eat four times a week or four, sorry four, four times a week four times a day fast and, and i've got nothing in and i can't prepare stuff and now what do i go to the canteen or oh, that's not on the plan oh, i've created all these potential like this idea i think i mentioned earlier ambivalence is the kind of key thing we're looking for and ambivalence is this kind of you're caught between kind of like a crossroads where you understand the why behind the the kind of the optimal behavior the behavior that leads you towards your goals but at the same time you've got something that goes well i'll just stay where i am right now it's safe here you know Mm. and it's being able to identify that and deal with that and manipulate no manipulate maneuver around that um which is where you'll see a lot of kind of positives come out from the interactions so in his case yeah i want to eat more food but you're like okay what's the but okay that's that's the reason that's the barrier so let's talk about that and then let's see what's what's the learning from that that we draw onto the positive and actually move down like let's take the fork in the road and actually progress down the path so they're the types of things i'd be looking out for with people brilliant what i'm noticing and what i'm picking up on have you become a more compassionate coach? Would you say you're more compassionate? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you think so. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, I'm picking that up on you. 
you know, and even from what you said, you know, back in the day, you'd be calling things out. Now you're you're seeing it from a, a, a 360 view. You're looking at it and you're seeing it from from their eyes and an understanding because the, the, the definition of awareness, great awareness, compassion is the ability to identify suffering in yourself and others and want to help alleviate it. So you're trying to help him with the problem solving because it could easy just hear a fucking eat you. Yeah. What are you eating? And a lot of coaches do that. And the other coach that was working with me was like, I'm going to over and give out to him. And that, that's kind of my, that's been my experience to be honest with you. Like I've been, I, I'm not I kind of one thing I'm not the food police people don't need me to be the food police people deep down know you know what foods are less optimal compared to foods that are more optimal or more conducive towards healthy behaviours in whatever yeah, way it's a great show they I'm do not saying good or bad I'm not saying it. no don't say no <laughs> not let's say good or bad it's um, just, you hate protein bars don't you you hate fulfill bars uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do yeah god Nothing wrong with me for fill bars. I still eat them, by the way. 26 euro, 15 bars. You up the flats. I don't know, wreck your buzz here, but uh, I actually saw there's a uh, little are selling protein bars. Three in a box for 350. Three in a, yeah, but they're not for fill. No, but they're better quality. <laughs> the co- I thought, you, <laughs> thought, you, <laughs> thought you weren't the food police. Yeah, no, exactly. No, fuck I, them. I think people, some people like uh, get to the point where it's kind of like, oh, be careful what I eat around this fella. <laughs> no, you don't. No, I don't give. I'm the most selfish <laughs> fuck ever. I don't give a fuck. Like I remember being on a, a leadership course, right? And I'm talking with all these game changer leaders, CEOs of organisations, and I knew when I went there, <coughs> excuse me, there'll be only soup and sandwiches, soup and brown bread. So I brought chicken with me and a brother, da, 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 and uh, this lady, and she was well up in her organisation. She started telling me that uh, that can, there was. There was vegan champions of sport and all and I just looked up and went, okay. And I kept eating. And then she kept going on and kept going on. And I was like, what's your point? Like, I'm really sorry, but can you tell me what your point is? And she says, I'm just saying that you can be a champion. You don't have to eat chicken and meat. And I said, I still don't get your point. And I wasn't being facetious. I wasn't being argument. I just didn't understand what she meant because mm. I was just too busy eating. So the next day she came up to me and said to me, I just want to say to you, I'm really sorry. Uh, yesterday I was trying to convince you that, that uh, you could be a champion by being being a vegan because I thought you may judge me and thing because I don't eat me. And I says, I honestly wasn't even aware that you don't. And second of all, I'm not really that interested. It's none of my business. I was just too busy being hungry and eating me food. But she was trying to convince me and there was a lot of projection going on. I didn't give a fuck. I'm not the food police. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. If you want to eat Cocoa Pops or if you want to eat fucking Brussels yeah. sprouts for you, then I don't care. Yeah. Your choice, back to what you said, I'm not the food police. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Not Because I don't know what I'm doing is right and I don't know what you're doing is right or wrong. I just know this is right for me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whether you want to be a vegan, a vegetarian or you want to be a, a, a breatharian, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Knock yourself out. No judgment. Knock yourself out. You yeah. do you, boo, right? Yeah. It doesn't impact me unless you're paying me, and then I kind of have to give you a bit of advice, don't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. But yeah, like I, people don't want to be. I don't think they want to be scolded and told. I, I, that's how I think. There's probably coaches that might disagree with me out there, and that's fine. And yeah. probably should sit with them and figure out what their perspective on on how they approach things are. And, um. I believe you catch more bees with, with honey than you do with vinegar. Catch more honeys being fly than flies with honey. What? You got <laughs> fucking confused me there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to think about that one. Leave it, leave it marinated in there. Oh, marinated. Yeah, See, that's a little, uh, little cooking. Kip, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Come here. What's the one thing you'd like people to take away after listening to this interview? We're getting from... a takeaway. What? We're getting a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> that <over> that. <laughs> fucking comedian not the context? Oh, I like it I like it bit of uh, semantics what would you like people to take away in regards to I don't know metabolic health or, or what's out there what, what do you want to leave them with your, your parting wisdom uh, wow great question um, find out where you are doesn't matter where it is find out where you want to go again that can be a personal choice maybe it's advised by a medical professional or something like that if it's 
financially and time wise viable seek help from someone who's kind of qualified in the <coughs> area um and take it step by step and kind of be small and, and the big thing is identify times when you want to move towards your goals and the times you want to stay where you are and not go towards your goals like when you look out this evening nasty weather but if your goal is ten thousand steps a day you could easily look out and go nasty weather i don't want to go for a walk and then you go well is that going to take me closer to my goal or away from my goal go out and get to walk what's the worst i get a bit wet cold i can always have a shower and dry off and then sit on the couch or whatever it is so lean into that feeling of why don't you want to go and do the thing and i have it every week on sunday i go here sunday i have to cook a couple of meals now for lunches and i go oh, i hate doing the groceries i do honestly i hate doing grocery shopping but i know i need to do it because i need to have the food there to prep like it's not easy it doesn't get any easier and uh i just have to kind of little have a word with myself like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> who's in charge so because uh, i can't i can't roll over on monday and be like i've no food yeah because you didn't go and sort yourself out you didn't take ownership of that like so and again if like that's kind of what the benefit of a coach is you might need someone to kind of prompt you on that when you're not that self-aware early on in your journey and that's kind of the benefit of a coach so if it is financially viable and is an option you could always look to get help um and another one thing i would say that i've kind of found useful is with the overwhelming amount of information is just pick a method who cares if great it's point, great right point. wrong indifferent pick a method and just can you stick to it because you'll start to see benefits of that and then as you go on you'll start to see well actually it would suit me to veer this way on the path or go this way on the path but the key thing is get started get into a routine build your habits and leave all the arguing for nerds like me on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anybody that wants to work with you, where can they find you, metaphorically? <laughs> <I'm looking for laughs> I'm you. still on this planet. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a great point. Where am I? Um, I am on Instagram, and I'm also on Twitter, uh, at rich underscore kelly33, so if they want to sl slide in my DMs, as, slide in as they say. Like Jarrell. Um, and I'm working on a website, so my company name is Greenline Performance. So hopefully have a website, greenlineperformance.com, up and running soon. Richard Kelly, Mr. Richard Kelly. Did he call you Mr. Kelly, the students, or did he call you Rich? One guy called me Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I've never, I've never said that name in my life. So that was really funny, yeah. And were you all right with that? Uh, you didn't give him the attention I, around, did you? No, I kind of did a double take, and I kind of was like, I actually asked one of the students that I was like, did he just and she was like, yeah, you think I was like, yeah, he did. I was like, I was like, no, yeah. I was like, yeah, what's your question? And I was like, that's weird. Ricky. So, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Deadly. I love that. I don't like it though. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> I know, I just no one's ever called me that, so I'm not Ricky. used to it. But I was, what was the question? Mr. No, they don't call me Mr. Anton. Um I'd be surprised if a few of them actually even know my name, some of the, the younger students. <laughs> Too busy fucking yeah. being millenniums. <laughs> so come here, uh, Richard Kelly, uh, Ricky. Oh, I'm going to just keep calling you Ricky now from now on. Ricky Martin. Uh, uh, look, honestly, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't endorse your services anymore. I absolutely love working with you. Uh, we will work again. Uh, I want to go again. I want to get the abs out. <laughs> uh, I just loved your approach. I loved the human approach. You got me, you get people, and then you apply your, your scientific research and knowledge and uh, your learnings, which is a great blend. And I think that's so important. The person force, then the academic uh, knowledge. You know, I don't think it's, well, maybe for some people, but for me, not going out with the academic knowledge and, and book work. I think the human approach is deadly. So I can't sing from the rooftops anywhere for your service. I really appreciate your super coach and I would recommend them, highly recommend them to anyone out there that wants to improve their performance, uh, change their body composition or body recomposition or improve health markers. Richard Kelly is the man. Nice one. Appreciate it. Thanks very you much. Up the flats. You up the flats. So there you go. How are you doing? Have you got a still have you still got a bit of the COVID cushion hanging around the mid drift? Uh and you want to get rid of some of the the Christmas selection boxes, give Rich a show. Uh, thanks very much for all the feedback about the Jackie Fox interview. I've got some incredible messages. Absolutely incredible. What an incredible woman. Uh, it was a powerful, powerful interview. So thanks very much. A shout out to Andy from Liberty Media Hub, Noel Royley from Rooney Media Graphics, the girls in 
Shannon's Hope line, and uh, Fran Dempsey. Fran Dempsey is one of the the unsung heroes of the Liberties, and I want to give him a show. He runs the Liberties uh, soup room, him and Git. They do incredible work. I get loads of feedback about the videos I do, and people thank me. It's the likes of Fran that, that really, really inspire me. Fran has his own uh, battles, and he battles on in service of the Liberties, and he's an amazing human being, and we've got many of them. Andy, me, me pal from, this, from the podcast, does great work. There's so many great people in the Liberties. I just love this place. Uh, it's incredible, and uh, I love it. So look, uh, wherever you are in the world, mind your little self. Oh, if you like our work and you want to help us out, we have a go for uh, uh, a Patreon page. If you want to send us the price of a coffee, please do. If you don't, you can have it all for three ninety nine. Absolutely no problem. Uh, if you want to buy me book, it's in there too. Sell, 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 Andy. Uh, anything else? Am I forgetting that? And subscribe. Sound like a YouTuber. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have, do you know what Andy, on Anchor FM it says we only have 108, we've more, we've about 120 something, this, we've done the, the what's the other one, the surprise interviews, what was that called, the anonymous, we've done anonymous interviews, we've done the up the flats ones, yeah we're just, we're fucking deadly, we're bleeding rapid, so look, no, no matter what, please, 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 mind your little self, uh, whether that's with your nutrition, your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health, it's it's really important how did it fall off the the, the list of importance stay safe and mind your little self you know we ha we're in a culture now where people talk about you know snowflakes and we've got weak and we got fear is fear i don't care if you're afraid of spiders you're afraid of doormen or beer mats or clowns or balloons fear is fear and i think it's priority on the the number one step of maslow's hierarchy of needs stay safe stay safe mind your little self we love you. Have a rapid day. You up the flats. <laughs>